Let's start off with um, measures being taken now to really buffer and shore up the shilling. There's news that the Minister of Finance uh, is looking to make a request to the IMF for 75 billion Kenyan shillings, uh, which is a lot more than what uh, the IMF is prepared to give as part of the extended credit facility. Will the IMF budge and will that amount of money shore up the currency? Very good afternoon to you, Lerato. Yes, the Kenya's finance minister has uh, been speaking to the IMF uh, regarding uh, some kind of debt facility uh, to help show up the shilling. And uh, at this point, it looks as though those kind of inflows may be actually materialized and come in hopefully before the end of the year, though we are still at a preliminary stage of uh, negotiation. Now, uh, while it's it may be positive news, uh, may, some may regard it as positive news, others may really not regard it as positive news in terms of uh, the fundamental of uh, the Kenyan aspect because what Kenyan really needs is to export more and there uh, to bring more reliable foreign uh, inflows which have really not been coming for or uh, being received by the country for quite some time. So should uh, this really come in, uh, it would increase the country's uh, export cover by uh, uh, quite a bit in terms of now we are about uh, two months cover and we want to increase that to about five, five to six months cover and bearing in mind this is what exactly the IMF prescribed to the central bank or to the Kenyan government at the beginning of the year then uh, it just seems as though we are really running around in circles in terms of how exactly to show up the Kenya shilling and increase the amount of forex cover. So all in all, while these funds may be uh, coming in sooner rather than later, it seems as though the long-term solution is yet to be uh, obtained. Okay, we are seeing though some positive sentiments starting to kick in with the NSC ending in the positive and having done so over the last four sessions. How does that reflect on the debt side of the market? Fixed income, we are seeing a better showing for the shilling at 99 shillings. Um, we know that yields had uh, edged up beyond 13%, but are we seeing some kind of confidence restored there? Not quite. On the fixed income market, uh, we still see a lot of uh, concerns to do with uh, the inflation rate, which also the Kenya's finance minister has uh, tried to allude to uh, in terms of it being expected to decrease uh, uh, come uh, the report sometime next week. So we really hope that uh, that really materializes. But as far as the market is concerned, the concerns are still out there. And uh, we saw yesterday that uh, the, the Treasury bill rate w mm -hmm. continued on, on the rise. Now we are at about 15 percent. So uh, it's really still not being taken uh, very positively by the market and the nerves are yet to be calmed. All right, let's move back to what's happening on the equity side of the market. Kenjin was up 8.11%. We do know that profits before tax were down 47%, but they're also paying a dividend. Was it really a dividend a payout that kind of said to investors, well, this might be a good stock to pile into? Yes, at, at this point in time, uh, investors are really clutching on to any positive news that they, that they can. So uh, with uh, looking at Kenjin's uh, profit before tax, we saw uh, a commendable increase and uh, it being a utility, uh, investors uh, really hoping that uh, you know, the market out there continues to, to, to acquire any power that they can from uh, Kenjin. So all in all, uh, the, the top line for Kenjin looks pretty good, but uh, it's, the, the, it's the taxation aspect, the end of the tax holiday upon uh, listing is really what uh, made the profit after tax figures come down substantially. And uh, this really speaks to the need for corporates to have prudent tax management policies. And we've seen that being done by several of the leading uh, institutions on the NSC. And uh, so for, at this point in time, really, the investors really just happy that Kenjen is able to maintain some growth on the top uh, line. Those tax issues withstanding, what are the company's plans going forward? We do know that they've got some um, big engineering and expansion projects uh, going forward into the next year or so. 
Yes, the company does intend to set up uh, quite a number of uh, power generation projects, especially looking at uh, renewable energy in terms of uh, wind energy especially and also uh, one or two hydropower plants uh, to, to come in, uh, in term th by being refurbished and really just coming in onto on the, the main line. Uh, but that aside, uh, for Kenjen, the issue of raising capital is one that has really, really uh, been the Achilles heel for this company. And it's something that uh, across the market we are beginning to see more and more, the need to raise more capital and to do it in a cost-effective manner. So that is really the, the concern for any investor out there. How will uh, Kenjen, you know, kind of uh, raise enough adequate mm -hmm. capital to be able to to bring online the many projects right. that they have. Uh, and uh, they being power projects, fortunately the government of Kenya has given the assurance to any investor out there that, that uh, the revenues are assured, that uh, the power purchase right. agreements will come through immediately. We have projects on the, on the, on the, on, on the ground. Kimati, we've got 30 seconds, if you can do it. Kenya Airways, uh, quarter two results coming through. Impressive growth in passenger numbers, but again, they're doing fleet expansion and uh, also spending a lot of money in route expansion. With inflation being what it is, austerity measures in Europe, will they continue to shine? I think they will continue to shine. Uh, they have really moved all their... Uh, proceeds in terms of they're getting all their revenues in terms of uh, hard currency that is in terms of dollars so Kenya Airways I think will continue to shine for now